Hey, hey Scott, yeah. the, the other day I was, I was behind someone when I was checking out at the grocery store because you know they lifted quarantine here recently. Huh? And you were behind someone. I was, I was behind <laughs> someone, social distancing. It was more than six feet, but I before I just wow, it's wow, that's, that's impressive, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, sm I smelled something just terrible. It was awful. Like I'm like I'm looking at this person. I'm like, did you shit yourself? And they said, well, yeah. And I said, oh my God, what the fuck are you going to do about it? And he says, I haven't decided yet. I'm not done. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. oh my God. And that's Tuesday. And uh, here we are with uh, Between the Rolls, which is Murder Hobo Inc.'s attempt at being philosophical and knowledgeable. <laughs> and um, philosophical. <laughs> Um, scatological, according to Blake. Is, uh, <laughs> oh, God. That was I hear, good. That I, was hear good. A, I hear a Pirates of Penzance musical coming on right now. I am the very model of a man. Not a major general, yeah. There's, so there's, anyway. there's, a, there's a butt pirate joke hanging in the air there that I'm just going to leave. There is. There is, a good, there is a good pirate joke there um, hanging in. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> dingleberries. So, <laughs> oh, God. I know, it just, it, just, it just keeps going. So, uh, anyway, welcome uh, to Tuesday. It is Between the Rolls, which is uh, as our attempt to be interesting. Um, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you check the little areas around uh, your screen here, you'll see things to buy, you'll see things to click on. You can also join us in our Discord, the Discord, or you can discard the Discord, however you wish to do it, which is absolutely fine. No, no, actually the Discord is pretty good. Uh, you probably need to come in and check us out there. So um, tonight we have uh, some of our normal cast members. Um, I was able to rejoin after a long hiatus and I am going to be hosting between the roles this evening. So I uh, hope that my uh, fellow castmates will um, <clears throat> be somewhat nice. They don't have to be too nice. That's, Why should that, that's we all up to them. Now? But we'll what? go ahead and start with introductions. Uh, tell us who you are, a little bit about yourself, what you do, where you're from, what you're wearing, you know, all those things. Carol, we'll start with you. Oh, God, what I'm wearing? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Carol. I'd like to think I'm interesting anyway and don't have to try. Uh, yes. I am a commissioned mini painter. I'm a sometime GM and I'm a long time gamer. Uh, and I friggin' love D&D &D and Pathfinder. Of course, this is not Pathfinder shows. I keep being reminded. Uh, so I think that's about it. I'll throw it back to Scott. Pick someone else. Blake. Blake. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're sucking on. <laughs> uh, I am. Uh, I, I'm sucking on a on a piece of metal embedded in a piece of wood, uh, and I'm wearing I'm wearing Turkish nipple armor. Oh god! I was gonna make a Jack and Diane reference from a John Mellencamp. So what you sucking on? <laughs> Chili dog. <laughs> but I, I'm. Blake uh, here, do the campaign sometimes, do this sometimes, say fuck sometimes, yeah. uh, good times. Tell inappropriate jokes all the time. All the time, inappropriate jokes. David. <laughs> Hi, I'm David, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I join these guys in one shots and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm still neophyte level when it comes to uh you're not a neophyte. Level. <laughs> neophyte level. Neophyte I like I was doing five minutes after being on. After that, your old hat. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, we did, did, didn't we officially graduate him from the D team last last show? I, I think I think you guys did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, so making my way up through the ranks. So anyway, yeah, something from uh, from last show that you said you were working on. Uh, you were writing some things. Um, anything you would be looking out for? Uh, well, uh, I'll probably start out with, uh, just like a one shot encounter. So, uh, hopefully I'll finish that soon, <laughs> but when it's ready and it's play tested, you guys get to run it. So <laughs> fantastic. So the format for tonight's show, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, about the things that I was not involved in. So we're going to go 
real quick through that because <laughs> this show is basically about me. Um, <laughs> and then we're going to talk about, uh, then we're going to talk, uh, we're doing like um, a class interest, um, uh, introspection into the different classes. Uh, last week, I believe we did Bards. And yeah. Just, uh, yes, yes, yay. Ding. Best class um, ever. Yeah. The tossing coins for etc um and then we'll talk about clerics tonight so let's kick off with a discussion of our episode six simper tyrannus i believe it was um um death to tyrants i believe if that's what it is um so that was episode 108 uh i don't think that was our was i don't think that was campaign i'm no. not positive no so who, who wants to give us their their impression of episode 108, Six Temperatures. I think I we think... got Blake slotted for that. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. So, let's go ahead and hey, um, I, I know um, what I Frank, think of Frank, it. Frank, you spell Blake, Blake. <laughs> Left out the B. So but, it just but no, I, I, I know what I think about it, guys. I'd be more curious to just have some feedback on what you guys thought. Oh, you, well, you don't want a rundown? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Give me a rundown. Oh, God. <laughs> I was I was I was I was blotto. I don't remember what happened. <laughs> oh my god, that was what last Thursday? Oh mm -hmm. I, remember, I remember we were from this what the heck was the name of the freaking town? Uh Footloose. Hope's, Hope's End. No, it's something the name of the town was Hope's End. Hope's End. Yeah. Well yeah, yeah, because ho all hope was ended if you went to Fool's Hope. I'm sorry, Fool's Hope. Fool's that Hope, yeah. Was, that's what it was. Be, all right, fool. That makes sense. Fools up because God knows that's what we were—a bunch of fools with hope that we could change things by taking out the leader. Uh, basically, unless you were the leader or any of the people in charge of the town, you were miserable slaves or indentured servants or basically all stuck in the mud. And if you, you know, it was a tyrant of tyranny. Uh, if you didn't agree, you would probably die. Um, or yeah. get tortured, which I think is what would have happened to us. In fact, we know that's what would happen to us. Um, it was it was a really interesting plot. I actually thought it would have been a great plot to start for a campaign, um, where you where we could have actually drawn that out far longer than oh, was it two and a half hours or oh, three hours? We drug we drug it out pretty long. <laughs> so. I, so a very sandbox, which I enjoy sandbox games. So this said, I, I, I did enjoy it. I thought it was, a, it was a really interesting plot. And basically our goal was to, I said, to assassinate the leader. We had all had enough. We'd all lost family members and we lost, each one of us lost one family member too many. And that was the last straw. So what did we promptly do? We promptly start the game by <clears throat> getting into a fight with the guards. <laughs> I believe, let's see, I, I was playing a dwarf, and you know, the one thing you never want to do to a dwarf is take away her flask of alcohol. And the guard tried to confiscate it, and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. And that devolved into a fight where we killed the guards. So anyway, we, we did all flee different directions um, and met up later. I'm going to keep it somewhat short because this could be a very long retelling. There was a lot to happen. Yeah, I, I was about to try to figure out how I can give you, you know, signals, you know, to like, you know. You can't because yeah, I don't. No, I, can't. I don't have it on the gallery view. I have it on the one person at a time view. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so basically, we decided that the smart thing to do after we had, you know, to find this leader. Because we heard that if you get thrown in jail and you just did something like, oh, I don't know, kill the guards, that he would deal with you himself. So I took that and then we're like, all right, let's get ourselves thrown in jail. So we did various things to get ourselves thrown in jail. I did drinking again and let's see. Um, and it, let's see, David, you did, I think you drank with me. And the other two were littering origami paper all over the place because our our cockra uh, loved to make origami. I thought that was a great little shtick. That's the things that's cool about RP is when people have little little things like that that make their characters interesting. 
so we got thrown in jail and had a bunch of misadventures there. Uh, but we do, but I will give credit. The players are, my fellow players were pretty smart. Uh, that we managed to get the keys, we started a fight, got the keys off one of the guards, which is very useful when we get dragged off after we convince them that, oh yeah, we killed the guard or I killed the guard and these guys and I threw everyone else into the bus and told them they helped. Um, so we all get dragged away to the torture chamber and they locked us up all on those wicked devices. But fortunately we had the keys and Kyle, Kyle's character managed to put some cloth into the door of the Iron Maiden and kept it open enough so he could get out and we all freed, get freed. And then the dictator showed up. You know what? I'm not going to spoil it because you know what? You should watch if you want to see what the dictator was and what happened to him. But it was fun. It was, it was long. That was the biggest thing. It was long. And I was admittedly very tired that night. I had a really long week of work. So, okay. anything to so, add? She's lying. Like I liked it though. Great plot. <laughs> That's good. It, it sounds like uh, it, it did, did the party meet the objective for which it set out to try to endeavor to complete? Or isn't it? Yes, we met the objective. It said, if you want to see how we met the objective, which basically is we took out the leader, you will have to watch to find out how we did it. Okay. Okay. So I just it a good by saying, yes, you were successful in what you did. So now, okay. Oh, yeah. well, and, and, I, and I have to, I have to just remind everyone who the leader was because I'm not going to get too many more ter chances to use that name. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Use it. It was, it was a Howard Phineas Felter snatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I laughed every time I, I, th I laughed inside at least every time I heard that name. Oh my God. <laughs> so, friggin', it was such a Blake name. Howard Phineas felt this match. That's great. Uh -huh. That's a great, great name. It's a great villain name. It's a it great, really, great name for Yeah, plus everyone always wants to know how he felt this match. Yeah, he <laughs> asked me that question at the end. What did you think? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, it, was, it was it was it was if you couldn't tell it was it was a reference to trump because when i think of trump i think of grammar oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah oh, that's right. oh god we should not be besmirching our glorious leader right now in the moment of national tragedy oh he's hiding in his bunker somewhere he's not gonna <clears throat> <laughs> oh, that's 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 Melania's hiding in the bunker right now. Well, he, we know how that works out for dictators that hide in bunkers. Uh, we can. Uh, only... So, <laughs> um, um, let's move on to our next uh, our, our our next topic. Um, although, again, Frank, you, you've named all of these first topic. So instead of saying first topic, oh. then second topic, then third topic. Then fourth topic. You just named them all first topic. Well, well, yeah, they are all the first topic. We're talking about the first topic is the game. Second topic is the topic. But he has like four things named first topic. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I've read God. You mean you mean Frank Frank writes the episodes even when he's gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah, he does. That's it. This is just my way of, of just being a little bit of an ass. So um, our, our next topic, uh, let's just do first, or we could just do next topic. Um, we had episode number 109, The House on Penny Lane. Um, David, why don't you let us know a little bit about that episode? What was Penny your Lane. thought? And uh, did the team uh, achieve their objective? Uh, did they die? Did they try to die? Did they get anyone else <laughs> killed? Uh, well, there was goth involved. Was there it was a goth involved. <laughs> there were was kids. It was it tubby time? It was no, no. We got that that lineup mixed up. Actually, it was Michael that joined us for that episode, and he okay. played Gruffle. So, uh, Michael is from an episode where there was an episode where there were all the characters were named Michael. So that's <laughs> far back, but anyway, that, that's where Michael's from. We were happy to have him on the show. He did a great job. So House on Penny Lane starts, uh, first of all, the setting is in Cacophony. That's the one shots that I'm uh, myself and Carrie are usually in. 
uh, I was playing Zadar, the non-binary changeling ro arc arcane trickster rogue. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, we take a job. We take an assignment from the local adventurers guild. Uh, it is to investigate uh, a possible haunting in a house on Penny Lane. Uh, as we arrive, uh, we are greeted by one of the neighbors who <laughs> proceeded to tell us that the house was inha inhabited by hippies and that they were growing some kind of herbal matter in their backyard. Stinks to high <laughs> heaven. But, it, but that wasn't from the herbs. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so yes, Admiral Halsey next door. That's not his name. I'm just calling him that. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm disappointed he didn't name him that. I know, I know. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, he proceeded to inform us that I think somebody's died in there. So, and it's just like, you excuse me, I'm going to go take a nap because if you didn't know, I'm cranky. So anyway, <laughs> so we decided to invest, uh, take the job, and investigate the house. So as we're going in, we're trying to be all stealthy, uh, stealthy and sneak inside the house. Um, we uh, managed to get in without setting off any traps, although we set off some uh, special effects through a pressure plate and, uh, you know, magic mouth uh, enchantments and stuff like that. So we get told to get out. But, uh, yeah, so <laughs> we ignored that and decided to stay. So ex exploring the house... Uh, yeah, you know, we're finding valuables left and right. We decided to, one of the things that we found were paintings and uh, the paintings were valuable as our DM had told us. So <laughs> Gruffle and I, yeah, decided to <laughs> use Mage Hand to try to uh, cut the uh, paintings from their frames. And yeah, we both rolled really low. <laughs> so. Oh, and I, and, I feel this. And then Frank and I just, I mean, it just spiraled after that because we kept using Mage Hand and Frank was just like, oh my God, stop. So. <laughs> hey, hey, I got a couple notes from Frank here on, on, on the Twitch chat. He what says, apparently it's Admiral Ballsy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the ballista. What's with the ballista? Oh, the ballista. Okay, let me tell you about this ballista, folks. He has a loaded ballista on the top of his <laughs> of his house, which is like a widow's watch, where he goes up every what uh, around noon and fires a ballista off the <laughs> off the top of the house oh, so into the Mary bay. Poppins. Yes, yes, exactly. It's definitely a Mary Poppins reference. So, <laughs> oh my god. So yeah. So we're we're exploring the house uh we uh one of the rooms that we explore we find a body body inside uh the room is decayed upon investigation we found out that the person that expired uh was poisoned uh so making note of that we continue to search through the house uh to kind of speed things along uh we uh explore <coughs> them right across from us uh ran into some enchanted armor and enchanted weapons and uh yeah i thought uh, a rug of smothering was around there somewhere but oh god damn it another one no no i was sorely disappointed <laughs> anyway oh good so after we get through that we find like uh, a large like um i don't know altar room uh almost like a chapel within inside the house uh, where there were a series of dead bodies on prayer mats. Uh, actually, uh, the bodies uh, from the way that they were arranged, how they were dressed, we determined that they were part of a cult and that it was a murder-suicide, mass murder-suicide. But uh, a body was missing from one of the mats. <laughs> but one of the things that I forgot to allude to, Frank decided to throw one of his handy dandy adventure cards at us and uh, prior to starting the adventure pulled one said a, uh, uh, a woman uh, comes up to us in the street says her daughter is missing she's a girl in a blue dress and you know yada 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 she's missing will you find her which and camille's just like she's a she's a teenager that's what they do so anyway so get to the crux of it 
and anyway, we uh, we determined that everybody in the died in this uh, suicide except for one. Uh, we explore the room. Uh, one of the things that we find, we find um, a false wall. <laughs> we use Meiji and open to find a false wall, which completely pissed Frank off. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we open the wall. We get on to the other <laughs> side. Uh, then we find the little girl in a blue dress and her dog. The dog kind of led us to the, the false wall. Uh, the girl is floating with a spherical orb, a glowing orb, covering against her. Yes, folks, this sounds like it. Anyway, they all float here. Anyway, she's, uh, she was floating. So, and at that point, uh, we see uh, an apparition on the, the balcony of the stairs that comes up, and that was the BBG, big bad guy. So, mm -hmm. fight ensued. Uh, we managed to take it out. Uh, it was it was quite something. Uh, Zadar used silent image and shape shifted into uh, the appearance of Camille, and then Camille decided to uh, cast mirror image. So we had like six or seven Camilles circling the ghost. So it was like a roulette game who the ghost was going to hit. And unfortunately, it hit Gruffle. <laughs> so the guy that wasn't even involved. Aww. Or Gruffle. Yeah, and he got aged like 20 years magically. Ugh, it was awful. Aww. Hey, yeah, Frank is whining on Twitch Twitch uh, chat that uh, you guys he gave you a volute scroll scroll and you never used it. We never used it. We never I know, used well, it. Camille we, pocketed. We normally don't. He loves those things. It's like, yeah. I, I just I wrote back to him. There, I'm like, and hey, those who don't know what a volute scroll is, it's almost like a deck of many things. It's, but it's, it's a it's, scroll, it's, except it's never a positive effect. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. So we just kind of pocketed that for later. Like well, if, if, I, if I'd seen a volute scroll that once said wish spell, I'm like, okay, maybe I'd take some chances. But instead, your arms always turn into cats. <laughs> no, this one had a dolphin on it. So it could have just teleported us into the bay. You know, there, there's no he's telling. Calling, he's calling bullshit on your statements, by the way. <laughs> of course he so, is. So, I mean, I said there's two reasons why. Oftentimes, I'll get magic items or better yet, yeah, like, if I'm doing organized play, I get boons with nifty effects. I never use them, never remember to, always forget. But then I said to him, well, the other thing is you need to up the stakes a bit so that we're desperate enough to open up something. We have no idea what the effect is going to be. Mm -hmm. That's oh, yeah. so, so the idea behind the episode was to see if the house on Penny Lane was really haunted. Yeah, and so determine it that was. it was haunted yeah. by it was. a ghost. Someone got aged. And then did you, was the ghost haunting there due to some ancient curse or was it haunting it because of some wrong uh, perpetrated against it during its life? Did you ever unlock any mysteries or did you just kill the son of bitch? We just killed the son of bitch. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, no, we unlocked some of the mysteries. Uh, we determined that the ghost was uh, probably the cult leader. So. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, there were a couple of rooms that we missed, but we finished the episode in less than two hours, Kyle. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, I'm sure Frank's like, yeah, yeah, yeah Kyle. <laughs> the only thing he, the only other thing he wrote on there, well, first of all, he's laughing now, ba ha 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 ha. The only other thing he wrote in there was the vicious mockery portrait, which that sounds. Yeah, yeah that, that was that that that's classic. That is murder that, hobo. <laughs> and I, I, I will have to. I haven't had time to listen to yeah. the episode. I will yeah, have to, I, I, I have to that, watch that one. I, I didn't get a chance. I was actually out camping over the weekend, or at least trying to camp over the weekend, so I didn't get to watch anything. But yeah. uh, I, I will try to catch up with those two episodes. And now we have to our next one. Um, well, we think on our timing. I don't know if we really have time. Which we're, we're almost seven thirty. Um, so Carol, could you give us a quick no, actually? I can't. The only one who watched to hear was David. I yeah, didn't know, David. I have not had time to watch anything these days. <laughs> well, David, good. Could you give us a quick overview of quote unquote the plot thickens. 
Okay, the plot thickens. All right, from what I discerned from it, it's uh, still Frank's Sunday Intrepid Crew. Uh, it involved uh, exploring an Albert mm -hmm. Warren, and it ended up, uh, yeah, with some possibilities of some characters either ending up in a river, almost drowning, and uh, yeah, that, that that's about it. That's all I can sum it up for. <laughs> give us give us an overview. Of what is the Intrepid Crew? Because we're we're just in case we have any any new viewers, um, we understand that there's a campaign, and then we understand that there's alternating one shots. What is the Intrepid Crew? So uh, so we can have a just in case we have a new viewer or new viewers that can be a little bit brought up to speed on that. Well, uh, uh, these members uh, for this one shot are members uh, from uh, a campaign that Frank ran some time ago. And it's, uh, it's pretty much a family affair. All the players right. themselves, their real names, most of them are named Frank. It's like Frank, Frank, uh, Frank Sr., Frank Jr., Frank the uh, Third, a couple of, of their uh, their their kids. And uh, I mean, it's just a really fun affair. Okay, uh, okay. So the interpreter least, is another group associated that's mainly within the family. I think or, they're the uh, ones who got them into this whole business too. Uh, the okay, ones who got okay. into doing yeah. uh, streaming games. They're a bunch of little murder hobos, like we are <laughs> anyway. Uh, they're they're a loose loose group of you know characters by the name of Robert of Zeppelin, uh, a bard. Uh, let's see, uh, one by the name of Haggis Crapstain, and uh, yeah, one of the characters got killed the the Sunday before and all that. I'm, I'm not going to allude to which one, but they ended up. Yeah, you'll just have to watch. Okay, okay now that's good. Now, 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 uh, now we're all cut up to speed. Okay, yep. so it sounds like some some pretty good episodes there. Um, mm -hmm. Please catch them if you can on the YouTube channel. Um, that uh, that you can that you can view at your leisure. We'd be happy to uh, for you to view them and then give us some feedback on what your thoughts were um, on our Discord channel as well so we'll move on to our topic po positive positive feedback only if you have negative comments fuck off yeah, well, <laughs> goes we saying. don't read those yeah, we anyway no, we, don't read <laughs> we have like the we have like the you know the, about the, frank you can leave all the negative stuff about frank you want <laughs> yeah well i mean we all know that it would be different so let's talk a little bit about clerics yes. and what what is it about clerics that make them interesting or not interesting uh or um um <clears throat> let's start back here with grandpa's story time again <laughs> yes oh, fuck. and let's talk about clerics i love yeah. scott's story time <laughs> yeah. No, uh, in, in all seriousness, clerics, um, clerics were one of the original classes, one of the very first classes that came out. It even existed in, uh, you know, basic D&D, &D, um, where you had basically, uh, you know, an elf was a class, uh, a halfling was a class, a dwarf was a class. And then if you were a human, uh, you could be a thief, a fighter or a cleric. Uh, or a or a or a magic user. So these were some of the basic core classes that you had. Um, interestingly enough, uh, the cleric advanced relatively quickly, um, and then many things came from that from from different clerics. One of the first parts of it, I remember even talking about the cleric, and I'll, I'll get to, to everyone else. I just want to give us a quick little background of where the where the cleric came from. Clerics could not use edged weapons. That was always what I thought was interesting about them. So no swords in clerics. Use maces, use morning stars. So I remember a uh, a a um, book report I gave about medieval weapons when I was like nine or ten years old. Uh, and of course, you know, I had to go into the player's handbook and show pictures of everyone. And, uh, you know, these are, this is a halberd, this is a forshawn, this is a sword, this is a morning star, this is this. And I knew kind of knew what they did and what they didn't do versus which ones would slice and which ones would crush uh, because of the fact that some weapons can only be, uh, some weapons could not be wielded by clerics. I think a lot of that went away in, in later versions. And you had like, you know, of course, a cleric of Clannon. Uh, the Greyhawk um, God of Swords and things like that. So you, you you have that didn't always last. But the point is that a cleric was the first kind of maybe attempt at being a fighter 
type character that could also cast spells, but they were restricted in both. They could not get up past seventh levels and spells, although some of their seventh level spells probably matched ninth level wizard spells. And they had restrictions in the type of weapons they could use, although they did not have restrictions in the type of armor they could use. They can be in full plate. And of course, they had the ability to turn undead, uh, project their holy symbol, and um, drive away uh, undead creatures. However, there were no alignment restrictions, so you could very easily have an evil cleric that worshiped an evil god. That being said, uh, we're gonna discuss how that has migrated over time into the current version we have now uh, in 5e where you have different domains inside clerics. So why don't we start here talking about the, um, um, the, the um, I'm gonna ask each one of our participants here, our, our panel members, what their favorite domain is and how they've seen the progression of a cleric, when they use clerics, what's their favorite time? But let's start with the idea of what is your favorite domain in 5e? And Blake, we'll start with you. Uh, well, real real quick, I just going back to history lesson with the, with uh, Grandpa Puba. Uh, <laughs> Grandpa. So it, it, kind of something that I think you were hinting at that I, if, correct me if I'm wrong here, is that almost what you would consider what evolved into the paladin class is how clerics were originally supposed to be. Yeah. Close to it, yes. You had, you had the idea of, of a holy warrior. Um, and then, of course, what happened with, with paladins is they became much more martial. Um, and you can even get to, you know, you can even get to the uh, to the origins of the paladin as being, you know, one of the crusaders, um, the um, um, hospitalers, I believe, were the were the uh, were the clerics. In essence, they were priests who also fought in the army and were considered holy avengers and holy clerics of uh, and messengers of Christ. So yes, there was that 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 streak within the cleric class that had them as being holy warriors that I believe eventually um, migrated or morphed into what we would call a cleric, where they bumped up their martial abilities in combat, removed a lot of the restrictions on combat, but then kind of brought down their spell casting ability, still gave them some laying on of hands and some innate healing and such as that. But yes, the, I, I was kind of getting to that point, Blake. Yeah, well, because it, when you, when, when Back then, when death was a possibility for a lot more characters, your heel bitch had to be strong. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Amen. So, yeah. Hence but, why I started creating clerics. <laughs> why? Because have... guess, who, guess who's going to be the heel bitch? <laughs> Actually, I already am for this show. But I don't mind. I'd like to have other people take that role. Well, you're going to start spreading the wealth. So. <laughs> So, so the first question to you, Blake, is is yes. what's your favorite domain for the current crop of clerics and how they've been oh, interpreted geez. in five e? I have, I, I really do have a few that I that I like. I like, I love a good grave cleric uh, because I love, I love that mm -hmm. fuck your crits. Yes. Uh, with, the, with the sentinel at death's door feet, I, 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 that can really, that can really be very, very tide turning if you need it to be, especially if someone. Especially if you're trying to make peace, uh, it can usually be beneficial in that way. But first character ever created, got to go with the knowledge cleric, prudence, the fucking chosen of Ogma, uh, because I, I, I think she's, I think she's still one for twelve for her suggestions. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Aww. laughs> I, I'm like, I was actually doing that when I found out we were doing this show, I was going back and thinking about it. And I'm like, yeah, I think she's about one for 12. <laughs> uh, I, I just love that, that, uh, uh, it, it's, it's not so much psionic, but it's, 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 a uh, uh, almost creating a diviner, mm. uh, that can, uh, just always, always seems to be able to discern what it would be a bad decision to make. Not necessarily what the good choices are, but what not to do. Uh, okay. So I, I have to go with the knowledge cleric uh, and the uh, 
I think they have, I think one of the things that they always have prepared is an augury, which is one of those spells that no one ever really uses, but can be very handy if used correctly. Right, right. I remember uh, using augury in, uh, in one of the campaigns that I DM'd on to try to, 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 uh, to attract, use, use it to great effect to be able to help the, cl- the, uh, the, uh, the party understand, um, you know, where, you know, where they needed to be going and, and how they needed to be going about it. Yeah. So that's, that's, I'll, I'll just, I'll leave it there and we'll, we'll, I'll see what everyone else has to say. Okay. David, what about you? You, you had mentioned that, uh, uh, you had agreed with the idea of, uh, of, of making sure that your clerics were strong and that you're, as you would you call it, the healed bitch is strong. Right. So, um, tell me a little bit about your favorite, um, domain in the current, um, um, incarnation of of uh of clerics in 5e okay well um i mean one of the strongest domains for i mean as far as heels there, there's really really only one that really stands uh hidden shoulders above everything else is of course the life domain and i've i haven't really had a chance to really play one but oh my god i'm a theory crafter so i I've got 36 characters, folks. I right. mean, so, oh uh, so anyway, my D and D beyond page is like, so anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, the life, the life clerk, I, I enjoyed creating it. Uh, I tested it mechanically on, on like a couple of, uh, one versus ones with, um, a DM that I play with every once in a while. And I mean, it's great. I mean, she plays a cleric all the time and she loves it. I love her character. And she's the one that recommended Life Domain because the heels are just, I mean, uh, the, the, the channel divinities are the, are the bread and butter for your cleric. And uh, the Life Cleric just does uh, a large amount of healing when, they're, when they channel their, divin- their divinity. Right. But, but as of late, I've uh, started fooling around with the... Um, the arcane, uh, the arcana dominion. And um, I gotta say, I really, really like it because uh, basically what it did, I'm the kind of player, I mean, uh, I I like to play magic users. Sometimes I play a fighter. I started getting more into to playing fighters. Um, but one thing I always found myself is lacking heals. So, uh, so, when I discovered the Arcana Dominion, I was just like, let me give this a try and, and see. Because you you have the basic heals, but you get the cool stuff that the wizards get. And you're you're pretty hardy. I mean, you carry a shield, you can you wear up to medium armor, and uh, yeah, uh, I mean, as of right now, one of the the things that I have, I mean, uh, you know, of course, my character carries its mace, but for example, it's just a regular maze. One of the, the always prepared spells uh, for the cleric is magical weapon. So I can just cast it on there. Boom, got a plus one weapon. So that's what's great about that dominion. Uh, so, but one of the things that I do carry though with the shield is an arcane focus. So I've got a wand of the war mage that adds plus one to spell casting. So one of the things that I did is I created a variant human and took a feat. I took Magic Initiate and got Wizard on top of that. So that gave me full access to all the fun uh, cantrips and stuff that you get as a, as a Magic user, as a Wizard. So anyway, I got the character created. I, I love what it does so far. I'd love to get it in a game. I'll probably will take it into one of the games. So. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now, Carol, I'm going to ask you a slightly different question. I'll ask you what your oh. favorite domain for clerics are. But I also wanted to get your perspective as a Pathfinder player. Huh? What do you see the main differences between how you play your favorite domain in a 5e cleric versus how you see or how you how how you have seen clerics being played in Pathfinder? What is the what are what are the differences mechanically in playstyle? Because that's going to lead up to my next yeah. round of questions. Oh Lord! I mean, I haven't. I have a Pathfinder 2e cleric that I've played like once. Ah, uh, uh, Carol, Carol, yeah, Carol. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the thing. I have 
Cleric, believe it or not, is not one of the ones I've actually really played in Pathfinder. I've played so many others. But clerics, I never really had a chance they're to make. They're all make. bards, right? They're all bards. No, they're, they're not. No, actually, in spite of my whole rah-rah bards, actually, I have a very diversified roster of characters to pick from. Um, I do have I do have a couple. Actually, I come to think of it, it had just been a while since I've played it. Um, I do have one that I do. I, I There's one in Pathfinder one they play, but I play it actually like a bard. Don't laugh. But there is a, um, I believe it's an archetype where you get, uh, you basically get uh, inspire courage, but it's basically, ser it's called like sermonize. But it does essentially the same thing. And for me as actually as a religious musician in reality, this sort of thing always kind of called to me. So I, I sort of built that, that kind of religious musician. Okay, but, okay. Um, but, I mean, I still go in very much with the same mindsets uh, with both. Is I'm I want to build a uh, something really good at healing, because that is such a needed role in your party. I mean, you know, it's it's I, I've done games where we haven't really had that, and it just it's really kind of painful. And I don't, you know, no pun intended there, whatever you want to call that. Um, no, I and and I will. I'll build them specific. You know, I'll build them. That's basically what it is. I would build uh, my clerics to bring to like my organized play tables, so that if we needed a cleric, I could take it out and play it. But I mean, I still a lot of um, a lot of a lot of it though. It is a very similar mindset. It's still I said I'm still trying to build a party healer, or and I'm still envisioning that this is a holy person connected with their god, even more so than a paladin. I see. Um, I feel like a paladin it does have that connection, but it's not quite as strong. I feel like the paladin is the arm, the strong arm of that god, but the cleric is the voice of that god. Yeah, and they and I, I, I agree. I almost pictured the paladin representing the church, but the cleric the deity. Yeah. yeah. It said, are the paladin the protector of the church and essentially the protector of the cleric? Yeah. And it sort of works both. It's sort of like that. In a, I play World of Warcraft. So it's sort of like that thing of, you know, you have a tank that keep, pulls all the baddies to him and the healer keeps him healed up so he can keep fighting. And that's how, and, and that's sort of actually how I view it here too, is I, I view it, I like to try to stand back and not be a warrior like you know in the first edition days i like standing back and just healing people or occasionally if if it's like the first round and no one's taken a hit yet i do like to get out there and cause a, a little bit of havoc so now but that's that's good, that, that's good. I, I i wanted to bring that to our to our next topic is and how how do people like to play clerics there's one thing understanding what is your favorite class? And what I've seen as a DM, you have a couple of different play styles. <coughs> One is that the cleric is your force, is your is your healer. You know, basically he stands almost in the back with the magic users, but maybe a little bit closer front, and he's healing your frontline fighters, or he's healing whoever needs healing. That's one. The second part is that the play style to where they're centered in on being buffs they're they're they are giving bless or bane or they're trying to boost the stats or giving uh giving you know help uh auguries they're trying to be um Guid uh, guidance and uh, yeah. guidance and all of these things that are that are almost like a force multiplier for the uh for the party when you when you've played clerics or you've seen clerics work inside your your party where do you see them as being most effectively used? Do you like to see them being effectively used as that standoff healer uh, or more engaged in the party um, as, a, as some type of force multiplier, buffer, um, or, you know, baner, or, you know, so, I don't know how I'm going to say that, so, or debuffer, thank you, that, that's, that's a thing. Uh, some, someone who casts sanctuary on themselves, uh, and then goes in and up to the frontline party and not necessarily healing them, but giving them bonuses to what they're doing and trying to debuff or 
counter what the other spellcasters may be doing? How do you see your play style? Uh, and uh, David, we'll start with you on that. Um, well, the play style bit I, I envisioned for it would, would be as the buffer. You know, the person that goes in there and does all, I mean, in addition to the healing is doing all the buffs and debuffs, you know, kind of helping with the assist, like you said, augment the party, you know, pretty much, um, you know, and in a pinch, be the pocket healer, you know, stand behind the fighter and just keep, keep healing. So, because I, and the reason, the reason I asked this question, and I'll let, I'll let Blake, Blake address this is that. A cleric is one of the first things that you say, you know, do we have a thief? Do we have a cleric? Right. right. You know, can can we can we open up because they're party completers, right? You know, can we open up traps? Do you have do you doors? have sustain? Do you have DPS? Do you have right. yeah. yeah? Yeah. So like what are your thoughts on play styles of clerics, not just domains? Depends it depends on the situation. Uh if you have a group of first levels, uh having a cleric isn't necessarily uh, so important as a healer because when all of you have six hit points and any any one hit could potentially knock you down, uh, it's not necessarily so effective. So being able to uh, let's say, okay, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm I'm going to cast bane on these on on these foes so that they are going to suffer disadvantage and be more like that's going to be more efficient use of my spell slot than actually healing you right when they do hit you because i'm i'm, I'm effectively multiplying right your, your life by two by making them miss i see uh, so uh i think that a, a good cleric build for for just first first level low level uh should have a sacred flame uh and a like light and probably a guiding bolt resist resistance or guidance whichever you choose i'd probably be more inclined to say to say guidance mm -hmm. than uh, resistance because guidance has more environmental utility i see i see uh, but and then you know take for your spells healing word guiding bolt Healing word and guiding bolt. I see. Because Hero. that guide, that guiding bolt is also going to affect, is going to play into that as well. Because the guiding yeah. bolt is going to give advantage to any attacks. Any so. attacks. Correct. 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 So Carol is talking about play style and talking about how because you 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 said uh, just a little bit earlier how you know you you have that healer in your party um, play styles when you have played clerics or you played with clerics. Have you found them to be more effective as combat aids or more of like a utility to, to aid the party in combat or aid the party in buffing or and debuffing? Or have you seen them um, having more having more utility or more um, use for the party? I guess that's the same thing as utility. As, as a straight up healer, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to heal you but in the meantime, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna engage in combat, or or how? In far as play styles, how have you seen a cleric most be uh, utilized, most utilized most effectively? That honestly, that depends on the composition of the party. True. Okay, so let's say Pretty we get a party, you get a party with a, like a bunch of you know martial classes, like rogues and and fighters and such, and it's the only healer then yes, your healing is going to be so critical. But if you have a bard or one of the other, like a druid or something else that that has healing, then maybe you can switch it up and go do and and go more focus more on the debuffing. As for me, I like to build characters. I really like to build characters that fill holes in the party. So, you know, I mean, the nice thing about way spells work in 5e is that you basically take a bunch of spells for the day and you can use your slots for whatever you want and whatever you need at that time. So it's not hard to really build a decent cleric with a, with a wide range of things you can do. You just, if you need to just heal, then you can just pop all your healing spells. If you need to, de if you don't have to do that, then you can just debuff something, you know, by casting Bane. And, oh, you didn't actually ask me what my favorite uh, domain was. And that is, Art. I will say, I'm, I'm sorry. Really 
really digging and as as uh, Blake said really grave I mean grave grave domain is what I have my one shot uh, goth gnome uh, what are they called grave the domain, goth gnome, yeah, goth gnome. My goth gnome grave clerk, and I really, really love it. I love the spell. The spells you get as domain spells. I mean, you get revivify. You know, you can bring somebody back after a minute as long as you have the the three hundred GP diamond. Um, yeah. But it, I, I really love the spells that come with it. I love the domain ability. I love uh, uh, path to the grave. That's you give somebody. I think what does it give somebody? No, it doubles you, oh, the the next the next damage that an enemy receives, they are the, vulnerable to. Yeah, that run also doubles the, your damage against them. Um, I know it's not a domain, but but one of the spells I will add that I really love as a cantrip is toll the dead. Oh yes, especially Absolutely. if you nail that effort after he's taken damage, because then now you're doing like a D12 damage. And if you're like a low level clerk, I mean, that's really good. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and is, it was grow as you grow. So, yeah, I mean, so I, I really enjoy playing her. And I said, I've tried to put a variety of things in there to fill whatever need arises. I tend to try to build characters like that anyways. But yeah. this is not quite the same thing when you get a fighter. I do have fighters and such too. But I do enjoy the ones that I feel really useful. And, and while we're talking about spell choices and that too, never underestimate a higher level cleric who is, who's, who's capable of inflicting wounds. Oh, yes. That's great too. Oh, that's uh, great. And that's that, that kind of that whether or not, you know, I know people that play clerics that know this is a holy person that's not, you know, try and shy away from the necromantic spells and all that. But if you find someone who's worshiping a negative or, you know, uh, one of the more uh, shadier deities, you know, <laughs> uh, and, they, and they have no problem with that, that can be very, very, uh, turn the tide of battle very quickly. You look at, huh? I believe, Critical Role. I think Jester, who's not an evil character at all, she, yeah, I, believe she I, I would say the Wanderer isn't necessarily a lawful good deity like by stand like what people think of for like a light cleric yeah so well, I mean, that actually sorry. brings me that actually brings me, I'm, I'm sorry carol I'll, I'll let you finish go ahead no, no, that's fine that's all i was gonna say is that is actually a good example of something that yeah although the traveler definitely was until we found out what the traveler was uh definitely is sketchy was sketchy back then so but she is not an evil character and i know i'm pretty sure she uses inflict wounds Oh or, yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying it's a. It's it's. Yeah. Exclusively for that use, but I do know that some some refuse some. Yeah. When, no. When and you're, it, when your character concepts. I do get that, and character concept does matter. That actually will direct a lot of the direction of our characters too. I think that we build. Yeah. So that actually brings me to our last talk about clerics, and that is under the concept. I wanted to talk about the idea of an evil cleric. An absolute oh, evil yeah. cleric. Clerics that worship evil gods. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by this is you have the idea of a cleric, uh, of a paladin, and you have fallen paladins, you have oath breaking paladins, so ones that, you know, they were the idea they always used to be lawful good, and you even have death knights. And so there's an idea of, of someone can start off one way and then become corrupted to another and it changes who they are. And mm -hmm. now, now that's one thing. Paladins have, have kind of have that lock and key, although people can start off being an evil paladin if they want to. But the idea of a straight up evil cleric, since now you're talking about clerics are supposed to derive their divine power from a deity. They are granted spells from their deity. They pray to their deity and they get spells from them. Matter of fact, that's one of the qualifying marks of being a deity is the ability to grant followers spells. So that being said, in evil cleric, how do you role play an evil cleric versus a, a normal cleric when it seems that some of the class specializations and some of the class abilities and even some of the spells are really kind of geared more towards 
helping people. You know, you're now I understand there's the reverse of things. You have blessed and you have vain. You have cure light wounds and cause light wounds. You have heal and you have harm. But still, the idea and the utility of a cleric, you know, is kind of centered around helping others. So playing an evil cleric. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop you right there though when you say helping others. Go ahead. I'm yeah, going go say, ahead. I'm, I'm going to say that the, to provoke this discussion. Does it that, 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 the, help that, the, that the concept behind a cleric is to help their god? Correct. Yes, that's a, and, that and is that's, a, and that's and that's and that's 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 uh, that's where I would argue that point with you. You said to helping others. No, you know, I, I was I was just throwing it out there. I actually think that's I actually think that's correct. Is that they're there to spread the faith of their god? So why don't you expand upon that? Or what is the role of an evil cleric? Well, you know, and j just because you have an evil cleric doesn't mean that they're not capable of healing healing followers for the greater good. Uh, you know, all all hail Zul. You know, uh, you, you know something. The way j to kind of fathom the concept is, you know, who's to say that if I'm an evil cleric and I'm healing the undead, who's to say that my cure wounds isn't the exact same as your inflict wounds? But my, okay. my, my but the energies are just different. I, I just because I just because you call the sky blue and she calls the sky blue, do you both see the same color blue? Okay. 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 You know, get, all, get all philosophical on it for a second. No, That's a yeah. <laughs> second time Dated. that terms come up tonight. Wow. Yeah. Dated. But uh, what do you think about about playing or role playing evil clerics? Have you done it before? And, other than and again, again, I, I think to, that to... I have no problem role playing an evil cleric. I think that there's nothing wrong with an evil cleric. I think it, you uh, the word zealot comes to mind. Uh, That's a good point. Good idea. You yeah. know, uh, feverish devotion, uh, 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 conversion by the sword. Uh, you know, whether you want to get into chaotic evil, it, 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 it can be difficult to try to conceptualize. Right. Uh, That's right. I, I could see conceptualizing um, a chaotic evil cleric would be a little bit difficult because of the the idea of religious orders and, you know, exactly. yeah. ceremony and things like that. I it, except, except at that point, you would almost say that their communion would be to go okay. flip a cart in the market. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. David, what do you think about role-playing evil clerics? Uh, I think it would be interesting. Uh, I I would love to do it, uh, to actually have your alignment kind of hidden. Like uh, everything that you've done up to a point has all been on the positive side, lending heels, buffs, and something, but then something something comes up and your true colors start to show. <laughs> and it's just like our one specific event party's about to get wiped out you bring up all these you know death cleric abilities suddenly and you know then you're like holy shit and then you murder hobo everybody but <laughs> but uh that's that would be interesting carol what about you role playing an evil cleric and you may be muted no i'm not muted okay i'm muted. sorry there's just a little red thing behind david that looks like it's on the I'm oh, sorry. that that that's yeah. No, I have not hit my mute button. Um, I'm always afraid I'm going to screw up the cameras hitting any of my buttons on my tablet. Uh, you know, really, I think the way it's, I look at it, first of all, I don't tend to play. I like my heroes as heroes if I'm playing them. I have a hard. I think I have a fairly hard time when I'm on the player side of getting into an evil skin. But and still, yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What'd you say? I said candy ass. I know Frank said that. <laughs> uh, did, uh, no. no, he would say that. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he would. He, he would. He would. I, 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 I Metatron, I speak for the Frank. He would say that. And I'm watching his comments. <laughs> he hasn't said it yet. Uh, although he said he brought up Lady Hawk. He goes, that guy was chaotic evil. <laughs> oh, it's sad. That, I actually haven't seen that movie. Oh, it's a great um, movie. But regardless, uh, I think if I was going to, I'd start with what god would I want to, now if I'm playing in a group, unless it's an all evil group, Pick a I'd, god. Probably put, 
I probably would stay away from uh, chaotic because they tend to really just be out for themselves or there to cause chaos. Um, and I was going to you, say, you're, you're conflating chaotic with neutral. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. Neutral is, but even then, if you're neutral or lawful, you, you probably can rein it in a bit more. Um, because you, I look at this way as if I'm playing evil cleric that I'm looking for a way to get power, you know, power from my God or even power from me. I'm evil, you know, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm his voice on this earth. If I'm more powerful, I can be better for him. That's true. But still, but still, I would, I would look at it that way. When you're chaotic evil, then all bets are off. And to me, be just asking to screw over the party. Um, I'd rather, I I'd definitely rather yeah. build something. But I mean, even then, you just you start with the god you want to. You, you start with the god you're building this cleric of. So if right. it's like chaotic evil god then you you know it would be perfectly in line for you to be a chaotic evil cleric depending on how that god fits into the fits into the universe that you're playing it yeah i was gonna say a lot of times if, uh, then all the chaos you are bringing forth will will make that god happy you know so i would i would leave leave this one last thought with the group and then we'll have our final thoughts is that i the most effective gameplay I've seen of a cleric have been within the extremes, a total lawful good cleric of Paylor and a total lawful evil cleric of Nairul. Those have been the two most effective clerics I've seen play. And I'm not, you know, just talking that from a player's perspective, from uh, when I've been a DM, I think that a, uh, that a lawful evil cleric um, well dedicated to the service of their um, their evil god is uh, is a very very effective build uh, in uh, in in five e. Um, I think the spells translate very very well. I think as uh, I think it was mentioned before, you can kind of wait and play along and then be very devastating. At the, at the last minute uh, with, with an array of very, very powerful spells uh, at, an, at a very inopportune time um, that, that could really wreak havoc. Um, and yeah, be very, if, very you're keeping, if you're keeping create or raise undead in your back pocket, you know, follow that up with a harm and a gesh. I mean, or, or just better, you know, wait, wait for them to, you know, uh, you know, say, raise uh well you know you'll raise me when i'm done you know you'll raise dead and say yeah sure i'll raise you as a zombie <laughs> <laughs> i have a problem with the lawful character lion yeah. yeah well that's true if it's in the service of their god then they're doing their i mean see you can always talk around that thing because they're evil but uh but yeah now let's do that now um let's do final thoughts because i think it is 802 and it's time for us to do final thoughts and then do this okay We'll start with you, Carol. Your your final thoughts. My final thoughts, uh, clerics. That they, they are fun. They are, they are fun to play, and I find them extremely useful. Um, I'll tell you what. I never pretty much. Uh, I I enjoy. I do enjoy playing them. You know, I said I don't have a lot, but when I have played them, I've always felt like one of the things I my p biggest pet peeve is bringing a character where I don't feel useful. Where mm. either there's another character that's covering the role, or, or what, or whatever. Um, but I've never, pretty much, never ever felt uh, unuseful as a cleric, and that's to me my favorite part of them. And just they're so versatile. So versatile. That's a good one, uh, Blake. Your final thoughts for tonight. Uh, well, and going back to some of our previous episodes that we we, we briefly touched on it tonight, but. Uh, go, going back to how, what are your options as, as if you're going to be choosing a divine caster, what are your options in the play environment that you are presented with? Uh, if you're, it's, if you're going for role play, what, what gods are there that exist? Uh, uh, cause that can, is that something that's going to be influential because there's, if, if you're doing a one shot, it's different, but if you, I, I really think that, and I would encourage most DMs if you're doing a campaign and you have characters that are acting against the, the alignment of the deities that your deity that, that your divine casters are worshiping. 
I would encourage you to hinder them. Good point. Yeah, that is a good point. That's a good point. David, final thoughts. Uh, my final thoughts is, I mean, cleric is one of my new favorite classes because I've really started to, to look into them and create the characters. I've played with some players that uh, did some great role play with them. I'm in a current campaign where a cleric is, you know, part of our, our main, our core group. And uh, the way, and it's played by our DM and the way she plays it is just great. Um, so, I mean, plenty of role play potential as Blake said. So, I mean, I think the cleric is a well-rounded out class. So, I mean, that's just the way I see it. I agree. Well, um, that's going to be it for tonight. It is 8.05. Uh, we ran a little bit late, but hopefully Frank will be too upset with us tonight. So You're we welcome. ask you to please join us. Uh, we're working out our schedule for the rest of the week. Uh, so we may have a game on Thursday. We may have a game on Saturday. We I'll may have a game on Twitch. It is Saturday. Okay, good. It's posted somewhere. You see, you know, yeah. it's, it's posted somewhere. And um, so look for where it's posted. Hey, wait, wait, I can tell you, we may have a game, a one shot on Thursday. The campaign is on Saturday night. We'll find out if we get out of battle, uh, battle keep without screwing things up. I mean, we've killed everything there, hopefully. Because it's been explicitly pointed out that we have not leveled up yet. <laughs> yeah, and also pointed out we have to leave, we have to first leave and rest. Both those conditions have to be fulfilled before we can level up. So, um, oh, what a hard I, ass Frank is. Wow. I swear. See, I'd, I'd rather just go back. And, I'd rather go back and have a nap in the hidey hole where we're keeping all the all the uh, expensive tapestries. <laughs> well, that's let's, good. That's Frank, good. Said, Frank said, as a warning, don't screw this up. Is yeah. what he's, no, he's I, know. I know. And well, thank you all for joining us. I'm sorry, Carol. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just feel like I have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to add the other game. Of course, there is a Sunday campaign. Uh, I'm sure that is running this weekend too. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for the uh, uh, for the um, uh, participation tonight, panelists, and uh, we hope to see you. Um, um, if you want to join us, uh, um, please send someone other than me a uh, a um, <laughs> note because you know. I just assume everyone that wants to talk to me is a fucking government agent and um, thus to be avoided. And, uh, you know, I'm sure no, <laughs> reach out to us on Twitter, please. Uh, it's easy to get behind uh, behind the camera here. It's um, easy and easier to get behind me. It's very, <laughs> apparently Blake can get six feet behind you. So <laughs> it's impressive. All wow. right, guys. Let's all wave, and uh, we, will, we will see you soon. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>